In the last six decades since independence, the definition of zoos has evolved from entertainment to centers of conservation. The function of zoos has undergone a sea change. It has broadened from just preservation and protection to breeding of endangered species and, in many cases, rescue centers for wild animals. There was a time when zoos were identified with menagerie style of enclosures like cages. Animals were kept as personal collections of Maharajas for entertainment. The first zoo was established in 1855 in Chennai, followed by zoos in different parts of the country. Many zoos still retain some of the elements of their historical inception, reflecting the transition from the old to the new. After independence, as early as 1952, the Board for Indian Wildlife recognized the need to improve the management of zoos. But it was only in 1992, in the background of unregulated proliferation of zoos, that the government of India intervened by constituting the Central Zoo Authority under the aegis of the Wildlife Protection Act 1972. The authority, mandated to oversee and monitor the functioning of zoos, formulates the rules and guidelines and ensures their implementation. Species today are endangered in the wild due to habitat loss, hunting and biotic pressure. In this context, zoos acquire a special significance as institutions which can protect and breed endangered wild animals to be eventually released into the wild. The zoos are aided in their multifaceted role by the Central Zoo Authority. The Central Zoo Authority is the implementing authority for the recognition of Zoo Rules 1992, which prescribes standards and norms for zoos. A major step towards animal care has been the designing of naturalistic enclosures, which create the ambience best suited for the animal. The wild dog enclosure in Arignar Anna Zoological Park in Bandalu creates the right habitat for the species. The bear enclosure in Assam State Zoo, Guwahati, allows the visitors to see the cubs without disturbing them. Undulating land and logs provide a setting for natural behavior. The Sambar enclosures in most zoos are landscaped to provide the species with a large area with a wallowing pool. The primates' enclosures in many zoos have been designed as islands with enough vegetation and play objects to stimulate activity. The elephants' enclosure in Nehru Zoological Park, Hyderabad, creates an ideal place for the animals to depict natural behavior. The Gharial enclosure in Nandan Kanan Biological Park, Bhubaneswar, with its wide water body, creates a naturalistic environment. The leopard enclosure in Himalayan Zoological Park in Gangtok is designed to allow for a free-ranging environment for the species. Yeah. 
well-designed aviaries in many zoos allow visitors to get a feel of avian fauna at close quarters. The nocturnal house in Nehru Zoological Park, Hyderabad, provides visitors the unique opportunity to see nocturnal animals in captivity. Many zoos also run safaris in order to create the effect of a forest for the visitors as well as allow a large free open space for the big cats. Innovative designing of aquariums, both freshwater and marine, is another area which is receiving some attention. Thus, all enclosures are designed to meet the biological needs of the animals housed. For instance, deer and antelopes require tree trunks to rub against and sharpen their antlers. Cats need rough tree trunks to sharpen their claws. Hippos and otters need clean water. Reptiles need burrows and well-vegetative dioramas. Informative and well-designed signages add to the attractiveness of the enclosures. Besides setting the minimum standards for enclosure design, the Central Zoo Authority collaborates with institutions like School of Planning and Architecture in Delhi to ensure innovativeness in design along with animal care. Specialized zoos have also been recognized by the authority, which deals with the lesser known species. The Chennai Snake Park in Gindi keeps a variety of reptile species in well-designed dioramas. The Butterfly Park in Hyderabad is another effort to create awareness about the beauty and importance of butterflies The botanical section in Assam State Zoo in Guwahati exposes visitors to rare orchids and creates awareness about endangered species of plants. Diet, hygiene, enrichment and proper upkeep are major management requirements in any zoo or rescue center. Every zoo must ensure that all animals receive a wholesome, nutritional diet in accordance with their requirement. Vitamin supplements have to be given and food intake of each animal has to be monitored on a regular basis. Proper upkeep and hygiene must be maintained in the enclosures. Periodic reviews and checks by CZA ensure maintenance of basic standards of animal care. Enrichment is another important aspect of animal care. It not only creates activity, but also prevents boredom, a problem which has often been identified with animals in captivity. The feeding of primates requires the keepers to distribute the food so that all the inhabitants of the enclosure receive food and the alpha male does not dominate. Honey filled into hollow bamboos allows young bear cubs to hunt for their food. Pygmy hogs breeding enclosures are enriched 
to allow for hogs to excavate their food out of packings of wooden sticks and leaves. Over the years, there is a realization that zoos are the gene banks for many of the endangered species in the wild. Today, a number of zoos are engaged in breeding programs of endangered species identified by the Central Zoo Authority. These programs are conducted under proper scientific supervision using stud books, animal history sheets and microchipping. Precautions are taken to ensure the purity of the breed. The Padmaja Naidu Himalayan Zoological Park, Darjeeling, specializes in Himalayan fauna and has been successful in breeding the red panda as well as releasing two red pandas into the wild. It is also the breeding site for the endangered snow leopard. A healthy, growing population of the endangered Tibetan wolf has been one of the breeding successes of the zoo. The Sipahijala Zoo in Tripura is located near the clouded leopard sanctuary. The zoo has been able to breed the highly endangered clouded leopard. The Binturong is another rare species which has been bred successfully. The zoo also has a healthy growing population of the spectacled langur and pigtail macaque, species endemic to the northeast. A well-designed nest has allowed the hornbill to breed successfully for the last few years. Among the primates, successful breeding has been possible of the golden langur at the Assam State Zoo in Guwahati and of the lion-tailed macaque and the nilgiri langur in the Aragnaranna Zoological Park, Vandalur. The Sakarbag Zoo, Junagarh, due to its proximity to Gir National Park in Gujarat, is the site identified for the captive breeding of the Asiatic lion. At the Nandan Kanan Biological Park, Bhavaneshwar, the breeding of the pangolin has been successful. This has been largely possible because of the scientifically designed enclosure. Hulok gibbons, Himalayan salamander, western tragopan, Himalayan black bear, tigers, brow antler deer, Pheasants are some of the other endangered species which have been successfully bred in zoos. Among the exotic species, the zoos have been successful in breeding hippos, giraffes, zebras and jaguars. The Central Zoo Authority has also brought in the expertise of non-profit organizations in the breeding programs. The Madras Crocodile Bank Trust in Chennai 
has a two-decade history of successful breeding of crocodiles and gharials and their release into the wild. The trust also looks into the breeding of other endangered species like star tortoise. Vultures are a species which are fast moving towards extinction. This may be because of the effects of diclofenic, a drug used to fight infections in cattle. The vultures get affected by the drug when they feed on the carcasses of cattle. The vulture program in Pinjor and Junagar is breeding rescued vultures in captivity and the ultimate aim of releasing them into the wild. The breeding happens in a segregated enclosure with no human interactions. All activities of the birds are monitored through CCTV cameras. The Pygmy Hog Center in Guwahati is engaged in successfully breeding of pygmy hogs and a small group has already been released into Sonai Rupa Wildlife Sanctuary of Assam in May 2008. The ultimate aim is to reintroduce and revive the species in regions in which it was found some decades ago. There are several encouraging success stories of the breeding programs. For instance, 60 gharials bred in Kukrel breeding center in Uttar Pradesh were released in the Ganga River at Hastinapur to supplement the depleting population. The effective implementation of the law has also created the need to provide homes for rescued animals. The Central Zoo Authority has collaborated with the Wildlife Department and NGOs to set up rescue centers in different parts of the country. Seven rescue centers have been set up for animals rescued from circuses. At Banarghata Rescue Center, Naturalistic enclosures for the lions and tigers with well-designed night shelters provide good living conditions to the animals. Rescue centers have also been set up near wildlife sanctuaries where rescued, injured and often wild animals are provided due care and a secure home. Those animals which recover well are released back into the wild. The Bear Rescue Center near Agra gives a home to rescued dancing bears. Groups of rescued bear cubs are a delight to watch. Enrichment activities ensure them better health and prevent stereotypical behavior. Veterinary care is an integral part of animal care and is the backbone of a good zoo. Today, zoos aided by grants and training from the CZA are better equipped with scientific knowledge and equipment to treat complicated animal diseases and surgeries. Today, complicated tasks like DNA testing are possible on zoo animals. Regular examination of animals is being done through blood sampling and stool analysis to ensure good health. Difficult surgeries like cataract operations are possible in zoos. Large zoos are equipped with ultrasound facilities for diagnosis of diseases and injuries. Rearing of birds is being done through regular observation and using incubators to ensure successful breeding. 
The examples are many and crisis management is a daily routine in a zoo. The Central Zoo Authority encourages zoos to supplement their scientific knowledge and equipment for the benefit of animal care. Modern zoos function as living textbooks for the study of nature. They play a major role in scientific study of animal behavior. The Central Zoo Authority has instituted a number of research projects which not only look at the scientific study of animals but also look at disease management. The National Referral Center at Indian Veterinary Research Institute in Bareilly is advising zoos in diagnostic and specialized healthcare for animals. It is also studying the nutritional values required for different species. The Laboratory for Conservation of Endangered Species in Hyderabad, Lacones, is engaged in studying the genetic configurations of different species. It is also looking at developing frozen zoos and assisted reproduction. Most zoos and rescue centers cover large vegetative areas and in themselves become home for many free living species. Open water bodies in zoos like at the National Zoological Park Delhi attract a large variety of migratory birds in the winter months. Located in or near cities, zoos are often the green lungs of the metropolitan world. Peacocks, snakes, mongoose, deers, monkeys, and many forms of endangered plant species all find a safe home in the green open spaces of the zoo. The valuable educative role of zoos and rescue centers is apparent in the way they expose both children and adults to animal behavior. A zoo receives thousands of visitors every day and zoos play a major educative role as many of the visitors have had limited knowledge and interaction with wildlife. Zoos provide them with the opportunity to interact with animals in their natural environment. The CZA encourages all zoos and NGOs to carry out educational activities for visitors and provides grants for the same. Otherwise, these three numbers are there. Actually, there are two types of elephant. One is called African elephant. Another one is called Indian elephant. Awareness campaigns with school children through painting, photography and clay modeling create an interest about the environment. Educational activities are held for the visitors, especially children, to create awareness about different species. Proper and attractive signages play a major role in providing correct information to the visitors. Teasing and provoking of animals is an issue which has to be constantly addressed in all campaigns. Behind all these objects of entertainment, education, conservation breeding and rescue and rehabilitation functions an efficient zoo staff. Zoos are large institutions and the zoo director has to manage the delicate balance between the needs of the animals and the facilities for the visiting public. Today, the Central Zoo Authority 
by formulating guidelines, holding regular workshops, training programs, surveys and publications has ensured that all zoos follow a uniform pattern of functioning and development. Functioning through various committees, the CZA ensures that all the issues of zoo management are looked at. Constant annual review of zoos, loan and exchange of animals and rehabilitation of animals from closed zoos are all activities closely monitored by the authority. The CZA has ensured that all zoos formulate master plans and for this training and workshops have been organized to facilitate the planning process. Another important intervention of the authority is that India has become a member of the International Species Information System for Record Keeping, the World Association of Zoos and Aquariums and Conservation Breeding Specialist Group, thus bringing Indian zoos on the international map. The Waza conference to be held in Delhi in 2014 will have a far-reaching impact on the management of Indian zoos. Today, it is important to realize that zoos are not a luxury but a necessity. As species become more endangered and whole ecosystems are threatened, the need for boosting the reproduction of critically endangered species and reintroducing them into the wild is even more important. The hope for the future lies with zoos. If our children are to see some of the rare species of our planet, they are the sanctuaries of the future.